For generations, we've tried to define beauty. It's an ever-changing idea, but what is it really? Is it defined by passion? Is it found in a ballerina's elegance? Or is it defined by simple joy? There's no single answer. Today, we'll explore one idea of beauty through the eyes of a New York dancer in this episode of A Nightly Story. When you think of New York City, you often think of Broadway and the performing arts like ballet or opera. And you know, just before the leaves changed, we met this really passionate dancer who's performed all over the world and has battled bulimia. And now she's working to bring the ballet to the general public in a place you might not expect, right here in Central Park. I remember when my mother took me to a ballet performance when I was about five. And I just felt this tingly, inspirational feeling. Lee McGowan is prepping for a dance. Some people have asked, well, why do you do makeup if you're just doing a show out in the public? She limbers up while doing her makeup. I've seen pictures all over, so yeah, I've got to look my best. <laughs> Visitors from all over the world have captured her graceful movements in the park, and today she's performing near Bethesda Fountain. It's very scenic. It looks like what one would paint for backdrops on a ballet stage. She'll be dancing for tips, but she says it's about much more than just a few dollars. Busking comes from the Spanish buscar to search. So I'm searching for that. I'm actively searching for my audience and I'm actively searching for what it is that I want to create. Thank you. Couples row in the background while the public stops to watch her stage overlooked by an angel. I felt like I'm protected by her because I'm coming out uh, being very vulnerable in the public space. Her pirouettes and grace quickly attract an audience. And I'm still trying to overcome this idea that I can't please everyone. <laughs> I want everyone to fall in love with the art form. And her control exposes a classically trained background and a devotion to an art of poise and beauty. She's danced in London, Canada, Africa, and has even performed acrobatics in Asia. She's also worked with South American hip hop artists and been featured in Spanish music videos. When I was working in a circus show in Singapore, and I'm twirling this fabric, sort of showgirl style, and I see a little girl who's popped out into the aisle and is mimicking me with her movements. And I think, oh my gosh, this child is me at that young age, watching the dancer on stage. And I felt that tingly feeling as the performer, realizing that I was making that connection. As many others have, we first met this ballerina in the park as she shared her passion with the public. I want to keep this art form alive and vibrant and connecting with people. And she's doing just that. McGowan performs all over in assisted living homes at family festivals and weddings, and she even teaches aspiring dancers. In traditional classes, a lot of times it was common for the teacher to have a ruler or a stick and actually beat their students with it. I understand now when I'm trying to correct my students' posture. You don't worry about the jeté. But if I was to try and implement those practices now, obviously, we'd have some issues. <laughs> and among her students are dreamy-eyed little girls. She works to light up that inner child. After spending a lifetime performing, she's now empowered herself to create her own work. But I realize this artistic presentation that's been popularized through the decades of the female who is seen and not heard. And we value the female for her looks, but guess what? I also have something to say. During the 2016 election, McGowan and her dance partner, Christian Ortiz, created a parody about both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. This ballet routine about the unusual election offers an unapologetic critique of President-elect Donald Trump. It's a dance that requires countless hours to hone and perfect. It also takes a certain ferocity, which grew from a background filled with struggles to fit the ballerina mold. I was getting this message that to be a ballerina, I had to be very thin. Um, I had to, that 
that discipline was very much around how I ate, what I ate or didn't eat. And I remember challenging myself um, to see what was the least I could survive on. Starving herself, she says, was something that she once viewed as an artistic commitment. There was a part of me that you kind of glamorize it and think, oh wow, look at the self-control that person has to not eat anything. Look at the sacrifices she's making for her art. There was also a part of me that was saying, oh, that could be debilitating. That could keep me from reaching that goal. And so I don't want an eating disorder. But what happens is when you focus on what you don't want, the don't doesn't always resonate. <laughs> and you end up going there. And she starved herself while spending hours training. So there were days when I remember eating like a banana and a yogurt. That's only about 250 calories for the entire day of physical exertion. So the purge through exercise was the beginning of purging, which later became forceful vomiting. But she wasn't able to keep her bulimia a secret. There was a moment I was hanging out with my other ballerinas in our dormitory at ballet school and I think we were playing a letter game like Scrabble and someone just realized oh my gosh Lee McGowan if we put a B in front of your name it's Billy McGowan and I thought oh my god they know and it was this shame that I felt around the eating disorder that also perpetuated it. McGowan says she continued to push herself until a stress fracture disguised as tendonitis eventually led to a broken leg. A doctor's visit when she returned home uncovered the secrets that she had been hiding from her family. That was actually a beautiful moment to hear that from the doctor that I had a broken leg because I felt, okay, this pain that I've been feeling and it's not all mental, it's not all emotional, but there's actually something physical that other people can say, oh wow, yeah, you're broken. According to the Eating Disorders Coalition, eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. An estimated 30 million Americans will have an eating disorder in their life, and nearly one person dies every hour as a result. McGowan was put into treatment and was initially told that she'd have to step away from dancing to save herself. There's times where I look at images of myself and I think, oh, I really should trim down a bit. And then I realize, you know, I'm giving an opportunity for others to step forward and just be as they are if I can accept myself as I am. While not everyone appreciates street performers, this ballerina hopes to bring a little magic to someone in need of inspiration. I imagine it's more like a Degas painting, that as people walk through the park, oh, look, a ballerina. And it's like they're there in this beautiful scene, living uh, the beauty of the art. And she has no plans to slow down anytime soon. Okay, well that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, click like or subscribe below. And if you have an idea for a story, tell me about it in the comments, because I love to see those. I'm always looking for cool ideas. But until then, you know, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day here on the lake in Central Park. It's a beautiful day, so it's a lot of fun. Again, I'm Devin with A Nightly Story.